Hello again everybody and welcome back to Fujits Blitz and this is another real history video. I'm going to be looking at the top five worst tanks ever produced or designed or considered during World War II. Yesterday we had number five, the Yag Tiger, and today we move on to number four, the Russian multi-turreted heavy tank, the T-35. This was a tank that started its life in the early 1930s when the Russians managed to get their paws on some documents belonging to another tank, but it was part of a design competition as such, with one team being led by a German designer called Grote, who developed the TG5 tank, also known as the T-42 Super Heavy. That's what it was meant to have looked like, and it was a massive behemoth. And another team, headed by N. Siet, who took his inspiration from the Vickers Independence, a British multi turreted tank developed in the, in the late 1920s, although many Russians dispute that. The thing is, at the time, Europe was infatuated with multi turreted tanks. Oddly enough, as you can see, the British developed this Vickers Independence, which was a truly shocking tank, to be honest with you, and, and was such a bad tank with these multi turrets that even the British were wise enough not to deploy them during World War II. In fact, they only ever built one because the tank was that bad. Nevertheless, Stalin loved the idea of multi turreted tanks, and in 1933, production started at the Charkov locomotive factory for the production of the T-35. And by 1938, these things were ready to go. The Russians absolutely loved this tank. It had been subject to lots of propaganda. It was rolled out in almost every parade in the time. It even featured on a medal. And every time this thing rolled out, Russians would gawp at it and be like, wow, what an amazing tank. It's big, it's mean, and it has five turrets. So it looked good, and there's no doubt that it looks mean and beefy with those multi turrets and its big length. But at this stage, the tank had not been proven in combat. And whilst it may look powerful with its many turrets, etc., once it started to see combat, its real flaws in the design would come to light. Now, quite a few believe that the, this tank's first action was in the Winter War. That is incorrect. The tank never saw action in the Finnish Winter War, but there are pictures of a multi-turreted tank engaged in Finland. Now, that tank is actually the SMK, which was the prototype tank for the KV series. It was eventually destroyed, well, it was immobilized by a landmine in Finland and nobody could recover it. So it was just abandoned, unfortunately. Only one was ever built. It, it was lost in the Finnish war and the KB series went on with just the single turret as we now know. The T-35's first known engagement was in June 1941 at the Battle of Brody in the Ukraine, which is actually the most intense tank battle of World War II, even surpassing Kursk. It was in this battle that the tank's numerous problems and flaws, sometimes very basic in its design, came to light. Notwithstanding its five turrets issue, the designers miscalculated the basic L over C ratio, which is where the length of the tank complies to the width of the tank, basically dictates the steering. Exceed this ratio, i.e too long for its width, the tank cannot be steered. Conversely, underestimate the ratio, i.e. Uh, the length is too short compared to the width, and the tank cannot go straight, it just goes off in opposite directions. With this tank, they exceeded the ratio, which made it very difficult to steer indeed, other than in a straight line. Turning to the tank's main feature, namely those five turrets, which sounds and looks fantastic, they were totally impractical. Space was incredibly limited inside the tank and it was almost impossible to fire this tank on the move, meaning it had to stop, which for such a large, big, heavy tank is really quite a bad thing because you become a very big and a very easy target. It had one 76 millimeter main gun, that's the top turret, and two 45 millimeter guns, both forward and aft 
with machine guns all over the place. All these guns, however, require a lot of ammunition, and that also takes up a lot of space. Not only that, because the tank was so heavy, when they initially built it, they had to sort of trim it down. And the easiest way to trim down a tank is to make the armor thinner, which coupled with lots of ammunition, many, many turrets, very thin armor, means that the chances of having catastrophic ammunition failures, i.e. ammo racks, is greatly increased, which the Russians discovered the hard way during the Battle of Brody. The armor on this thing was so thin that even the basic anti-tank gun at the time, the Pac-36, was able to pen this thing. With two of the four T-35s that were mobilized in that battle suffering from catastrophic ammunition failures, namely they were ammo racked. The thing is, if you are lucky or unlucky enough to get to action, then yes, that was a real possibility. The thing is, the majority of these tanks never even made it into action because they were lost due to mechanical failure or immobilization due to the weight in the engine, etc, etc, because they were just too big and many crews destroyed them or just abandoned them. There are reports, however, that out of the 40 35s lost, three German tanks were also destroyed, although it's not possible to say that these were destroyed by the T-35s because there were T-34s and KV-1s also involved in the battle, and the chances are they did the damage with their bigger guns. The T-35 was eventually and quietly withdrawn from the service by the end of 1941, with the Soviets realizing that it was just a totally useless tank especially when faced with the German armour of the time and its anti-tank guns such as the Pac-88. Only 61 of these tanks were ever built, mainly because it was just too expensive, and out of those, only one survives, and it resides in Kubinka Tank Museum in Russia, where it is in running order. The T-35 is an interesting tank. It does look mean, and it does look like a tank that's harsh. But, again, this is a case of the bark is bigger than its bite. The Russians really should have realised why the British never went forward with their Vickers independence. And maybe, just maybe, they would have kept this tank for the role that it was most suited for. Rolling out in Red Square to make the crowd happy. Anyway, I've been Fujit. That has been my number four on the list of top five worst tanks ever developed or conceived during World War II. By all means, comment and like and all the other stuff below. If you haven't yet, please press subscribe. It's a nice thing to do. I hope you enjoyed the content and I look forward to doing number three shortly. Until then, stay safe out there and catch you all again soon.